Uh, would Mr Woodhull please like to uh, read the webcast and introduction, please? Thank you, Chairman. The Chairman would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet and will be capable of repeated viewing or other such use by third parties. If you are seated in the lower public seating area, it is likely that the recording cameras will capture your image and this will result in the possibility that your image will become part of the broadcast. This may infringe your human and data protection rights and if you wish to avoid this, you should move to the upper public gallery and could I also uh, ask, remind members to switch off their microphones when they're finished speaking, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Willow. Uh, could we have um, apologies for absence, please? Chairman, we have apologies tonight from councillors Allgood, Bassett, Shalal Holden, Jones, Lee, Lucas, Morris, Pugsley, Sharif and Hadley. Councillor, uh, uh, Councillor Michael Owen has had a problem and is delayed leaving the office, so he will be coming, but he'll be late. Councillor Whitehouse, we had, I think. Can I give uh, apologies for absence for Councillor Tim Matthews? Tim Matthews. Apologies of absence from Shane Yerrell, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any declarations of interest? Thank you. Okay. Uh, now the minutes. Members, you, it's item four, sorry. Uh, members, you have before you a copy of the minutes of our meeting held on the 9th of April and the 23rd of May. Can I sign these minutes uh, as a true record of our meeting, please? Thank you very much. Uh, this is notifications. Uh, this is um, notifications, announcements, sorry. Uh, members, when you elected me to serve as your chairman, I thought I knew what I was letting myself in for. But I can honestly say that the last two months have been a bit of a whirlwind for me. Carol and myself have attended a number of major events from Ride London that passed through the district, the D-Day fly-in at North Weald, where we saw some Dakotas, which was lovely for me, the launch of the community lottery, which we will raise funds for good causes and local charities, the private viewing at Waltham Abbey Museum of two medieval coins found in Onga, the summer memory train on the Epping Onga Railway, the 10th anniversary of Oakland's care, the graduation ceremony at Chigwell Daycare Centre, and the launch of the new Essex and Hearts Air Ambulance, which of course you all know is my nominated charity for the year, and I suspect I may be chasing you for some donations in the near future, but not tonight. I cannot let this evening pass without mentioning the sad death of Sir Jack Peachy, CBE, a former local resident who passed away last month just a few days short of his 99th birthday. Jack set up the Jack Peachy Foundation to inspire and motivate young people, indeed many young people and youth councillors from our district, have been honoured to receive a Jack Peace Cheat Award. And I can see a couple. And I'm sure, members, you will join me in sending our deepest condolences to his wife, Lady Frances Peachy, and to the rest of his family. And finally, a few dates for your diaries. The Civic Carol Service will be held on Friday, the 13th of December, at St Mary's Church, Faden Boys which may involve actually a former councillor as he's taken to the cloth. So that could be interesting. And the Civic Awards, which will be held on Friday the 14th of March 
at the Delta by Marriott, Wolfram Abbey. I do hope you'll be able to join me at both of these events if you can put them in your diary. Thank you very much. And public questions. Do we have any? No, Chairman, we have no public questions this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seven uh, questions by members under notice. Uh, we have received no questions from members under notice. Thank you. Uh, right. Eight. Reports from the Leader of the, of, and members of the Cabinet. That's pages 46 to 77. Uh, first of all, uh, from Chris Whitbread. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. And um, members, it's uh, that uh, pleasant time of the season where we've reached the summer at last and many are ready for a good break in, in the weeks ahead. And indeed, many are already on good breaks, I hope at the present time. I, I think it's something we probably need to note when we come to do next year's calendar, that this is a bit late in July uh, for this type of meeting. So um, I'm sure we'll, we'll try and bring it forward um, next year. And of course, what a busy month we've had between the last um, council meeting and now, and things have changed an awful great deal across the country um, since that council meeting. Um, but we won't say too much about the general election this evening. More importantly, what we're doing as a council that is always looking forward and always moving forward with so much going on across the district in, in many different ways. Um, it's always a great pleasure to go out and meet with our town and parish councils, which I've been doing an awful lot of over the past uh, couple of weeks, um, seeing them in situ, visiting master plans that have been provided, and generally talking to residents across, across the district, which is one of the most pleasurable parts of this role in some ways. I'm not like yourself, Chairman, with the civic side, but really on that civil side where we're talking about the future of the council and such as well. So it's, it's always good to have those opportunities. The, when I last... Last time we had, it was before the overview and scrutiny meeting where we set up the Cabinet's plans for the year ahead, including the Fit, Fit for Future programme around transformation. And, of course, I mentioned at that time the importance of shared working with other local authorities, in particular with the North Essex Councils. And today I attended the Essex Leaders Meeting, CEOs, um, where we discussed many of the issues that are facing us as uh, a whole county. It's uh, the one meeting where we get together as Grace Essex, and of course we discussed a new government's drive towards devolution and devolution is going to become very important to us. As I said last year, I do now believe that it will move forward and I think there will be real benefits to the residents of the whole of Essex and in particular to Epping Forest where last night we were discussing some of the rural uh, bus services that are, which are poor and could do with a revamp. Devolution means that we'll have more power over transport and areas like that. So it's really important to us. And of course, it's also the catalyst for changing how we work, which is a very important part of the transformation piece. You've heard me talk numerous times about shared services. Well, in these financially chastened times, shared services will become more and more important. And I'm pleased to say that Epping Forest is ahead of the curve in many ways on that, particularly around tech. Uh, we share our 151 officer, we share a monitoring officer. We do a number of things already in that <coughs> sphere that, that help to make sure that we can focus the money that we have on those frontline services that matter, <laughs> that matter so, so much to our residents. And of course, we've, uh, with Councillor Hever in mind, we're also driven in technology. <laughs> and it was, it, it's good that, uh, of course, we have Google... Uh, looking to move into the area, and I think that opens up opportunities to us as a council as well. And to that end, I had a really positive meeting on the airfield with uh, colleagues the other day, where we looked at um, different options for the airfield and its future. And again, so much positivity going on. And of course, added to that, we have the police, police helicopters on the airfield. We met with them on Friday, and we had a really good positive meeting with them, telling us about the services that they provide from there, which helped to keep the residents of Epping Forest and around <coughs> Essex State, which is just a really another big positive when you start to sort of peel back the many layers of what goes on in Epping Forest. And we've had some really good news 
over recent weeks, Oakwood Hill, um, receiving additional funding like Wolfram Abbey did on the, on the safer streets basis. We all highlighted within my colleagues' reports. So there is really good news out there at the moment, as well as the, the, the harder things that we have to deal with. We know this year's budget will be tough, but we also know that we will balance the books and make sure that we take Epping Forest forward. Um, so, so I'd like to end the summer on a positive note. Uh, there are a couple of changes I need to remind members that as a um, group we need to make, and I need to announce in full council that we're a leftover from the, the, last, um, the last full council meeting. And one of those is to replace Councillor Sunga on overview and scrutiny with Councillor Dave Stocker. And then to put, nominate Councillor Sunga and Councillor Hever onto the Audit and Governance Committee. So with those, I would ask members to note and agree those changes. Noted. Thank you. But members, other than that, uh, bring this report to a close. I wish everyone a happy summer and look forward to being back in the autumn. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, report now from the Housing and HGGT Portfolio Holder, which I believe is Councillor Nigel Redford. There you go. What can you do? Uh, Chairman, thank you very much for that. Um, I attended the HGGT first meeting of the uh, new joint committee last night. Uh, where the five key stakeholders, us, East Hearts, Essex County Council, uh, Hertfordshire County Council and Harlow, met uh, formally for the first time to uh, ratify not only the uh, joint committee but also moving forward to get a presentation to the committee last night from the QRP panel, which was very informative. It showed us the work that the QRP panel have done over the last year. Uh, the HTGT also uh, met as discussed the annual review and the third part that we dealt with last night was the stewardship charter um, which is a good piece of work that's coming forward because it lays out the stewardship for all the new developments going on in Harlow. Uh, it's good that we, we've got our fingers in the pie, we understand what's going on and we also know where the development is and there were some discussions around some of the key issues that will be coming up in the future. Um, it's underst understanding how it's all going to work and how it all fits together, but I'm sure that we'll be bringing forward a paper later in the year that will tell you more about the actual Harlow Gilston and how it's progressing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Bedford. Uh, we're going to now report um, from the uh, Finance and Economic Development Portfolio. Uh, everyone happy with that? Have you read it? Thank you, Chairman. I mean, I'm happy to, to go into my report, but as written, um, and I'm sure um, certain questions will be asked by eager members later in the meeting, but getting used to the, the new portfolio, which also includes economic development, um, an area where I've taken particular interest, looking at the health of our high streets, um, but report as written, and happy to take any questions from members later on. Thank you. Um, I've just been advised, quite rightly, I think, that um, we should take these on block now. So if we could um, do that, can we, can we agree? Thank you. This meeting will be quicker that way. Right. Um, now, questions by members without notice. Uh, members, in accordance with the council's rules, a time limit of 30 minutes is set for these questions. Any questions not dealt with within the time available will be received a written reply. But if necessary, I may extend this period by up to a further 10 minutes if required. Okay. Councillor Murray. Thank you, Can I first of all say what a fantastic job you're doing in the chair? Uh, I've, 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 I've followed carefully where you've been and what you've been doing and you're doing a really good job. Thank you. Uh, can I also just very quickly say, because it's not going to be my question, that I note what's happening on uh, Oakwood Hill Estate and along with my two ward colleagues for the Roding Ward have taken a really close interest in, in that issue and had an excellent uh, teams meeting yesterday with the, uh, with the lead officer. The question I want to ask, and the problem with these iPads is you lose it, it's to uh, Councillor Kesker, and I won't read out the whole title that he's got, too many words. Uh, and I think like other members, uh, 
really concerned by the fly tipping report. 551 in what I'm reading in three months, uh, and particularly the one that cost £20,000 to clear. Uh, and we all know we could be using that money in other things. So my question really is, can you give a little bit more detail about what that waste was if it's costing 20000 to clear? I can only guess along with others. And is there anything else? Yes, the report outlines what excellent steps we have been taking. Is there anything else that we could be doing, uh, even if it cost us a little bit of money up front, to try and tackle this uh, growing problem? Councillor Kasker. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, the answer is I don't know what that £20,000 was spent on, but I will find out from my officers and will give you a full answer. I'm not sure if there's any other action we can take. Um, we claim in various places we've got CCTV, we have patrols. Uh, a lot of this is, um, I'm afraid, people from out of our area who decide that it's easier to dump on us than perhaps in London. But I will speak to officers about that as well. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sunga. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, I too would like to say you've uh, got a good start as Chairman of the Council. Um, and it's good to be a backbencher here now as well. I was delighted to learn that Bumbles Green in Nazing Parish is set to get a new playground. Can the Cabinet uh, Portfolio Holder for Finance Councillor Holly Whitbread tell us more about this project, this exciting project, and how the Rural Prosperity Fund can benefit rural locations across the whole of our district? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman, and for that question uh, from our very respected backbencher our newly made backbencher. Um, I really appreciate that question from Councillor Sunga, and I think it's a really important one to highlight. I myself was delighted that the Rural Prosperity Fund was able to give Bumbles Green a new playground. Um, to declare an interest, interest, Bumbles Green is in my, my new ward, but Bumbles Green was completely without a playground before, literally one broken um, climbing frame, and Nays in Parish Council were very proactive in getting this application in for the grant funding and it's going to make a huge difference to what is actually quite a, a large village over in Bumbles Green and a number of children live in there as well so really great news for um, Bumbles Green and actually as a rural councillor himself now with um, Lambourne within his ward it is really important to highlight that the rural prosperity grant funding application process is now open for round two. There's actually quite a tight deadline of Friday the 26th of July. So if you speak to your parish councils about any projects that they might have, I really would encourage them to get, um, get them in. This uh, funding is actually a legacy of the last government and off the back of the pandemic, and it's really about revitalising the infrastructure within our rural community. So fantastic piece of funding, great news for Bumbles Green and great news for the wider district. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Amos. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> Chairman, uh, with your permission, I would like to talk rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I refer, of course, to the forthcoming change of contract for the rubbish collection. Now, this council is hiring the vehicles. They're on the lease, I understand. And I would like to ask Councillor Balcom whether they will be electric vehicles. The reason I ask this is because I read an article only two days ago where Westminster City Council are changing over all their refuse collection vehicles to electric at a considerable saving. And it is estimated that if the vehicles are electric rather than diesel, you could save up to £20,000 a year per vehicle. Uh, we would not have to convert them, of course, because the well-known company, Dennis, which produces the, the trucks, would be able to supply them. So if Councillor Balcom could uh, comment on that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Amos, for that question. If you remember, we actually went through this earlier at scrutiny and the decision was actually made that we would go to vegetable oil and cleaner fuel um, for the sole reason that for every two dust carts we own we would need a third one to cover the amount of work so the price went up drastically. Secondly, the problem is also getting electricity to the airfield when we all plug in to be charged up 
North Weald would go dark, basically. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's not a load of rubbish. We are trying to move forward. The vehicles will be a lot cleaner. And of course, they will not be traveling through the forest regularly like they are now. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Markham. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, can the Cabinet member responsible for economic development tell me what initiatives are available to support and encourage women in business? Thank you. Who wants to take that? Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Councillor Markham, for that question. And um, encouraging women and promoting women in business is one of the, the nicer sides of, of my new portfolio. And actually, just a, a few weeks ago, we had an event in Buckers Hill, which I have to praise Councillor Patel for really spearheading and pushing forward. And this was sponsored by the Federation of Small Businesses, um, as well as the District and County Council. And there was around 30 women, and, and Councillor Brooks was there as well in attendance, all networking, talking about their businesses, and also a number of entrepreneurs looking to start and create businesses in Epping Forest. Of course, um, we're keen to encourage people of all genders to start businesses, but there are specific funding avenues available, particularly from Essex County Council, um, with their ambitious women <coughs> initiative too, where there's significant funding. But certainly something that I will continue to push is the promotion of women in business across our district to make sure we have events everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pond. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is about the uh, waste contract, and uh, part of it is already covered by Councillor Amos. But I wonder whether we could have an update on how the transition is uh, progressing, if anything, further since we were last informed. And also, on the transitional arrangements, uh, I've been a bit uh, concerned to find that the uh, supply of recycling sacks from most of the designated outlets appears to have dried up, can't get any new supplies, and also that uh, Biffa, uh, who may be suffering from uh, a bit of fan de siècle, uh, they um, appear not to have been particularly punctilious about their collections rota, and uh, I'm very glad that the council's officers have taken that up on the four out of the five occasions where it's happened to me. So an update, I think, would be very welcome, and uh, in particular, the sacks, I think, are necessary while we are uh, on the tail end of the Biffa contract. Uh, count, uh, Councillor Whitbread... Chris. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Before I hand over to Councillor Bolcom to give the, the, the full answer that's required, I think I just need to declare a non-pecuniary interest as the board member on Terra Verde. Um, it's a part of my role as leader, not an additional role. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Pond. Um, first of all, the sacks. As I understand it, I was on the phone yesterday about this. There's other villages, and that I haven't had them. It's a problem coming out from Biffa, and it's being sorted. Um, and yes, as you know, you're quite right, we are looking to go to the blue bins. If you had listened to the Cabinet meeting earlier, this, this week, last week, this week, last week, um, I gave a report back on the um, state of play, and basically, I'll just go over that again for you which is with only approximately 12 weeks now to go till the um, new service is operational. Um, we have 52 new vehicles coming, of which 30 are refuse collection. And it gives me an opportunity, to, just to answer another point that Councillor Amos made, some of those vehicles, but not the freighters, are electric. Um, so we are moving along on that one. Um, the maintenance of the fleet will be at the airfield, as you know. Um, work has actually started this week on the airfield, so we are starting to get ready for the move over. Um, it, obviously, it will not be ready for November the 4th, which is the first day of operation, but it will be ready for the, in the new year, so there's a temporary facilities being added in there at the moment to get us moving. This obviously includes securing the site, because one of the problems we're worried about is an expensive fleet on that site overnight. Um, 
and I must admit the officers are working very hard on that. Um, the staff will be 2 P'd over, um, as you know. At the moment, we haven't got any idea, basically, who's coming and what. We probably won't know till the first day of operation, November the 4th, but we have emergency things backed up, so it shouldn't affect. Um, as you're aware, waste collection has been, and you raised it, I think, earlier in one of the in your question, um, the waste collection is a vital service and we have had problems in the past. By actually moving to TVS, we will have full control of that, so we should be able to cut and make it condensed and straight through, so if you've got a problem, it goes straight to TVS and not through four or five other doors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Stocker. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I was pleased to see that the Oak Wood Hill Estate in Loughton had received safer funding um, from the Police, Fire and Crime Commissioner, along with additional, additional funding from the Epping Forest District Council to help improve public safety on the estate. Ninefields, in, in my ward in Waltham Abbey, has benefited from the last tranche of safer, fun, safer street funding. Can Councillor Ritzi the cabinet member responsible tell us about the improvements the funding has brought into nine fields and plans for the Oak Hill Wood Estate, please. Councillor Rizzi. Uh, thank you, Councillor Stocker, for that question. And like you, I too was delighted to see some of the great work that has been carried out in nine fields. Of course, it, it, um, uh, it was before my time as the portfolio holder, but some of the highlights um, were presented in the report, which was published back in May. And there was a particular emphasis in Ninefields to tackle some of the issues surrounding um, antisocial behaviour, um, empowering the youth, uh, safer streets, community action days, and many of that is what we're looking forward to uh, replicating with the funding that has been received for Oakwood Hill. Uh, and I was especially pleased to hear about the relevant ward members on the um, uh, Teams call with the lead officers. Uh, I know that it is something that we're looking to work very closely with the relevant ward members um, on the Oakwood Hill estate, uh, but all of the, um, the kind of the details are available in the report. Um, happy to take any further questions on it as well. Thank you, Councillor Risby. Uh, Councillor McIver. Th thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, Last week, Councillor Owen uh, kindly reminded me that one of my residents, the very talented Sir Mark Cavendish, and I'm going to read this because I don't want to get the title wrong, not only set the record for stage wins of the Tour de France, but possibly became one of the world's greatest sprinters. And would a member of the Cabinet or the Council like to take an opportunity to formally congratulate Sir Mark Cavendish for this incredible achievement? particularly as he is somebody who, as we all know, has suffered some very serious personal um, circumstances, which sadly has been in the press to have a very violent robbery. And does it not also confirm that whilst bad things can happen to good people, good people always prevail, and Sir Mark Cavendish has certainly prevailed, and as a community we should all be very proud of him, particularly also in the backdrop of Ride London, where so many young people across Epping Forest are able to be inspired by sport. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Chris Whitbread. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. I'm, I'm sure we'd all agree with uh, that statement that uh, obviously we're very proud of anyone who does well in across the whole of Epping Forest, uh, Mr Chairman. I'm sure you might like to write to the gentleman yourself and congratulate him on his achievements. Thank you, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Bernard. Thank you, Chair Mr Chairman. Um, this was a question for, uh, for Councillor Williamson. Is he here today? But it's a uh, planning um, issue. The Town Council has put together a neighbourhood plan, uh, Epping Town Council. Uh, I was just curious to see how that has, how that has been progressing and um, being uh, adopted by the District Council. Thank you. Uh, any uh, Councillor Chris Ripbread again? Um, well, is it Epping Town Council have put forward a neighbourhood plan? Well, there is a process in place which I'm quite sure Epping Town Council are fully aware of. It goes through, I think it's Regulation 18 and Regulation 19. Regulation 18, I think, is the first stage where you go out, you do your plan, and you'll go out to consultation. When you progress to the Regulation, I think it's 19, 
then it goes out. You have to, once you've had it cleared by the local authority, they're happy with it because it has to tie in with the local plan as well. Uh, and it has to be compatible. Then it can go to uh, the residents for a vote. If there's any difference to that, I'm sure either Epping Town Council will put you right on that, or if not, it will be um, our planning officers will be in touch. I think Holly wants to say a few words. Thank you. I just want to add to that as an Epping Town Councillor, I'm sure your two ward colleagues could fill you in also. I believe it's at the stage where it's about to go to referendum. Um, they're, they're due to, and Councillor Burroughs, you'll know, as a, a town councillor too. Um, so they're due to go out to a vote um, of the public in, in Epping, Epping Parish, which includes Coopercell as well on the neighbourhood plan. Just clarifying a few details, which I, I too wanted to, um, to get an answer from the Cabinet member on about postal votes and proxy votes as well. But I'm sure um, Councillor Williamson will get back in due course on those matters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor... Uh, I'm not sure which put their hand up first. Janet Whitehouse. Thank you, Chairman, and apologies for my late arrival. My question is to... Councillor Williamson as well, so presumably the leader will be taking, taking this. Um, in, the, uh, in his report, he mentions quarterly meetings with TfL, which is really good news, and it says it's to discuss um, central line performance and future service plans. Um, I'm just wondering if that can be widened to take up issues that members may have, and if so, how we can be notified that the meeting is taking place. I have a long-standing issue about parking for disabled people and also the litter on station approach to Epping, which needs to be taken up. Thank you. Chris Ripley, sorry. Thank you, Chairman, and uh, thank you, Councillor Whitehouse. Very good question. What we will do, because I know the Chairman of Overview and Scrutiny has asked for a meeting with TF, for the TfL to attend an overview and scrutiny meeting, I think that's the right place they should come to. I'm not sure in which context that Councillor Williamson is meeting with them uh, offhand at the moment, but I would suggest that when he comes back from annual leave, we will talk to him, find out what the context of those meetings is, and actually see if we can use those meetings to lobby TfL to actually come in and speak to us as a council uh, overview and scrutiny, which I know many members want to see. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor John Whitehouse. Thanks, Chairman. Yes, it's a question for Councillor Keska. And we've talked about disabled facilities grants here before when we've had not enough funding and a backlog of um, uh, houses needing work done to them. And I see from his report that now there's an underspend and money's being allocated not for housing improvements. And I just, and while changing places, toilets are a good thing, and it's uh, good if we can invest in those. I did want to understand whether that's because the backlog of disabled facility upgrades to houses has been cleared, or whether it's a decision to reprioritise the spending of, of the DFG. Um, and I'll understand if Councillor Keskin needs to get back to me in more detail um, separately, but uh, um, I do think it's important. It's been an issue, obviously, very important to the people who are affected um, by um, needing upgrades to their, their homes to make them more livable in. And I'd like to just clarify where we are with that. Councillor Kesko. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Councillor Whitehouse. It's a very, very important uh, question to which I don't have an answer at the moment. We have been very good at this council in repurposing the DFG um, monies to for disabled uh, facilities but this uh, question about specifically whether it's going to go on outstanding uh, projects i will speak to officers and i will make sure that you're given a reply as soon as possible uh, thank you very much for that and I, any more questions no? anything no right we will move on then to item 10 which is um, report of the cabinet north Weald airfield new control tower and station development post Google and sales obligation. And uh, Chris Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, I'm taking this report on behalf of Councillor Tim Matthews, who couldn't be with us this evening. It is a report that was fully debated at Cabinet a short time ago. Uh, it's regards to a vehement of moving money around the capital programme, and it's to bring forward monies for the new control tower equipment that we re require. And, and, and that's generally the thrust of this report. Obviously, we're moving quite quickly now with Northfield. Um, we will eventually be building a new control tower. 
and obviously the fire station that will be facilitated on the air side and that has to be done and we have to have new equipment for it and therefore this makes provision for that to be done. Um, but uh, happy to try and take any questions but really it was fully debated by members at, at Cabinet only a short time ago. Members, um, I believe we should go for a vote on questions first. Questions first, sorry. Any questions? Any questions? None? Right. In that case, can we go for a vote? Please? Agreed. Uh, all, all for the... Um, uh, those in favour? Thirty, Chairman. Thank you. Those against? Two, Chairman. Three, Any Chairman. Any abstentions? Four, Chairman. Thank you very much. That's carried. Uh, motions. Chairman, we haven't received any motions for tonight. Oh, OK. Well, that's that one settled. Okay. Now, uh, item 12, Overview and Scrutiny Committee. To receive a report of the Chairman of Oversight and Scrutiny. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the Chair of Overview and Scrutiny couldn't make it tonight, so as his Vice-Chair, he's provided me with a script, which I've been told not to deviate from. Uh, the last meeting was on the 4th of June. We discussed the Council's corporate priorities, uh, corporate plan, key objectives and actions, uh, year-end reports, budget monitoring for quarter four, uh, and we discussed and approved the proposed work programme for review and scrutiny, uh, the terms of reference and work programmes for the communities and place subcommittees. Uh, the date for the next ONS meeting is due the, July the 30th, agenda to follow. Uh, officers are working towards inviting TfL, as always, already been mentioned, to attend a dedicated ONS meeting. Uh, and contact has been made with TfL, and we are awaiting a commitment from them. Uh, we're fully aware that this is a very important issue for councillors uh, and the district, and we are giving it our highest priority. Forthcoming ONS meetings will sp specifically focus and scrutinise the work of the Youth Council, uh, the Health and Wellbeing Strategy, and the Community Safety Partnership. At each ONS meeting, the forward plan will be considered and revised where necessary, and the work programme will be adapted to allow for the scrutiny of decisions made by the Cabinet. We very much appreciate relevant portfolio holders attending ONS meetings to improve scrutiny in relevant areas. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor McCann. Uh, Councillor Murray. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, can I ask, and I, I appreciate the Vice Chairman uh, might not be able to answer this, but I want to put it into public forum, and I don't think it's controversial, but I would really urge that we follow the procedure we have in the past. TfL is such an important thing for us to try and, you know, scrutinise them. I do think that perhaps we need to be able to ask members to give issues and questions in advance so that we can forward those to uh, uh, TfL. It would be much better if uh, TfL could... Uh, come along having informed themselves on time scales issues rather than just say I will get back to you so it's how we would have tackled it in the past so I really would urge uh, both your office and the office of the chairman to talk to officers and give us the ability a couple of weeks in advance of that meeting and maybe even longer uh, to so we can give the questions in advance to TfL thank you very much Councillor McCann. If I could just uh, respond, uh, that sounds abundantly sensible. I think the issues uh, surrounding TfL uh, felt across uh, 
across the room and we will certainly make provision for forwarding questions, questions that can be fed into that, that ONS meeting as and when it's organised. Thank you. Um, if we're all finished there, uh, item 13, which is joint arrangements and external organisations, and if Gary Whittle would speak. Thank you, Chairman. Just to give the Council an update following uh, the annual Council meeting two months ago, um, the Epping Forest Local Liaison... The Epping Forest Local Liaison Group, I've been in contact with them. Um, I have sent them a link to a, a map of the new wards and they're going to come back to me uh, detailing where they want, which wards they want nominations from. Um, their next meeting is not until December 24. They only hold two meetings a year, one in May, one in December. Um, so once I get the information back, I will share it with members and then we'll deal with those nominations at the next Ordinary Council meeting in October. Um, the other outstanding one was the nominations to the local highways panel. There was some uncertainty about the number of members, district members that we needed to nominate. Essex County Council have now come back to me and it is uh, four for the time being, although the local highways panel does have the ability to amend that. So what I've suggested to the group leaders is that we go ahead with making four nominations for this year and then the local highways panel during the course of the year can have a discussion and come to a decision about um, how many district council members they would like in future years. Um, so we have four outstanding nominations from two months ago. Uh, for the Conservative group, we had councillors Lyon, Keska and Lee nominated. And for the Lib Dems, we had councillor Janet Whitehouse nominated. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Holly Whitbread, you wanted to speak? Thank you, Chairman. My, um, it wasn't in response to uh, Mr Woodall's report, but I just wanted to give a brief update on the museum, which I chair, um, and I think it's important just to feed back to members about how the muse museum is doing. Um, so Epping Forest Museum is now a fully vested trust, um, which is great. Um, we've, we've got some very active trustees. Um, a big thanks to previous uh, councillor Helen Kane who's been doing a good job on the accounts um, and also Patience Wilson who's done a fantastic job as secretary really drawing everything together and um, we've had a number of um, trustee meetings since we last met and for members um, I would encourage them to go along and visit the museum and see the towns through time exhibition which I particularly enjoyed with a whole wall um, with images of Epping from years gone by and obviously the other towns throughout our district but that's a really interesting exhibition um, also I've um, commissioned via the trust and via the um, Ian who is our um, kind of coordinator um, a Winston Churchill pictorial exhibition looking at images of Winston Churchill as our MP um, which this year marks 100 years so looking forward to seeing the outcome of that exhibition as well and one thing I would say to members today is really encourage people that you know to, to one visit the museum because it is a real jewel um, on Sun Street that many people often forget is there but also if you know anyone who's keen to volunteer in their community there's various different roles from conservation to gardening to, um, to admin so there's always something to do and of all ages particularly thinking as we're going into the summer holidays with those university and um, school pupils um, so I would encourage people to look into that as well thank you uh, thank you um, uh, I would like to actually go back to the original uh, joint uh, arrangements and external organisations. Is, is that what you want to speak about, Councillor Pond? Lovely. Yes, Mr Chairman. Uh, the provisional allocation, which was made at the annual council meeting of three Conservatives and one Liberal Democrat, possibly needs looking at again. Uh, but I, I suggest that we, uh, uh, we... The results of your consultations with the group leaders be fed into the next meeting. Uh, I don't think the local highways panel is likely to be very active in the next couple of months. Uh, <laughs> anyway, as, uh, as uh, uh, Chief Secretary of Treasury once said, there isn't any money. Um, but having said that, uh, I think we, uh, we do need to um, work with them and uh, uh, provide a little more balance than three Conservative, one Liberal. Uh, any other comments? 
Up, John Whitehouse. We can't keep kicking the can down the road, Chairman. We had this discussion at the annual meeting. We had all the time between the 2nd of May and the annual meeting to put nominations down, all the time between the annual meeting and this meeting to put nominations forward, and then to say that people need another three months or two months or whatever to think about whether to put a nomination. I, you know, let's just get on with it and vote on the four nominations for four places. Councillor Chris Whitbread. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman. Chairman, I have sympathy with Councillor Whitehouse and Councillor Pond in, in this case. The, the truth is the, the monies for this year's highways panel have now been spent. Um, the next time it meets will probably be in September um, as, as a panel, I should imagine. The, the July meeting was put off because there was another event going on on the same evening. Um, so, so there is nothing really other than uh, monitoring the schemes that are already in place um, that will come to the next meeting. Um, I don't believe there'll be any more fresh funds becoming available to the local highways panel um, at this stage. So whilst I've got every sympathy with what Councillor Whitehouse says, I think it's right to get the representation right. Um, I'm personally minded that it's not going to happen until September time. Well, I, I haven't had the opportunity to speak with the chairman of the LHP yet. I'm sure Councillor Pond hasn't. But um, as well as uh, liaising with officers, I think it's very important to get the view of the uh, chairman of that committee. Even if it reports back prior to this and we have a sub-meeting sub of, um, a sub -meeting of um, leaders to, to get the balance right and then go from there. Councillor Janet Whitehouse. Yes, Chairman, would someone please explain why there seems to be city's desire to keep me off the local highways panel? At the, la at the annual meeting, the three Conservative names were read out. When it came to my name, it was totally ignored, and Councillor Whitbread tried to encourage Councillor Pond to put forward a local, an LRA representative. What? And all the county councillors are on the local highways panel, so the LRA has a representative in Councillor Pond. The only party of any numbers that doesn't have a representative is the Liberal Democrats. So why can't we just elect the four of us this evening, as was suggested, and if change had made later, they can be made later. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rick, Chris. Yeah, Rick. Chairman, I have to come back. The local highways panel works in, in a, a mode of consensus across the, the county councillors who sit on there. They are actually the decision makers, and we, are, we have our path illuminated in making decisions by the district council members on there. In fact, Councillor Lyon had a slightly different role to play the previous year because the, the, chairman, the, uh, the now chairman of the local highways panel was then the portfolio holder for highways, so he couldn't make any decisions on his own, on his own budgets. But it, it, it's ridiculous. And actually making that comment about the full council, my sympathy has now waned completely. Um, the, I'd never behaved in that way. Actually, it was, I would imagine the LRA are the second largest group on this council will make their decision accordingly as to whether they nominate. If they don't choose to nominate, they don't choose to nominate. I've put three people forward as the uh, Conservative group leader because that's uh, what we agreed previously and how I'm trying to bring balance to the council as much as I can. Councillor Pond. Yes, uh, and of course we didn't know how many representatives we had to nominate. Uh, so maybe this is just me being slow off the mark, uh, unlike Mark Cavendish. But, um, but I thought it was more sensible to, uh, for us to wait until how we knew how many uh, representatives were required. Gary's email came through, I noted it, and I can, if necessary, put forward a name either tonight or uh, at a later date, but I think my suggestion, I, I, I certainly don't want to keep Janet Whitehouse off the local highways panel. She is uh, uh, dedicated to her uh, area and uh, she knows the roads very well. So I, I have no objection and I had no wish to keep her off the slate. I just wanted to know how many representatives were required and when we knew that, and now we do, apparently, I will be very glad to put a name forward. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just going to... Gary Woodall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just put me on the, on the spot, why don't you? Um, the previous meeting of the local highways panel was postponed. It has been arranged for August. So if there are no nominations tonight, we're almost... Unless the county councillors just want to meet on their own, 
then we're going to have to postpone that one. I think in circumstances, because we have four nominations for four places, if you want to defer, there has to be a motion to defer, which is seconded, and then we have to go to the vote. Chris Beckman. Chair, Chairman, the, the meeting in August, if it is in August, will be purely to monitor the, the, the current schemes that are going through, the many unfunded and the ones that have been funded for this year. Um, I think it's important to get clarity on this situation, um, whether it's just uh, the county council members, which some, some may let's please work on anyway. If it's just the um, county council members for that one meeting, that's, that's, that's not an issue um, because it is just purely monitoring. There is no money to be shared out or anything else that we get excited about, but I would hope that we can make sure that we get the matter resolved before the next full council. Right. Um, can you... Have we a motion then? Yes. Yes? And we have a second though. Yes. Okay. Who is for the motion, please? Twenty nine, Chairman. And who is against? Seven, Chairman. And any abstentions? One, Chairman. Thank you very much. I believe the motion is carried. Thank you very much. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, right. any, other, any other reports from anybody? Uh, any other? Any other reports from anybody in the Is there any other reports from anybody? No. In that case, this meeting is now closed. At seven forty fifty one, I think. Okay. <laughs>